All right, we're going in. This is as much of a Viva on the Street interview as you're going to get. Stop, maximum allowed, six people. Dr. Christian? Yes, David? Yes, Mike, I have gloves on, sorry. Francis. Nice to meet you. Do you, do you want coming in? Okay. Yeah, we're not going to need, uh, we're not going to need the microphone in here. Everybody out there on the internet, this is Dr. Christian. Hi. Uh, so we're live right now. Let me just tilt it this way. You know, I'll get you like that. Yeah, okay. Um, for, I mean, for the internet who doesn't know you, I think everyone does. Who are you? Uh, my name is Francis Christian. I'm a surgeon, uh, trauma surgeon. I do um, uh, oncological surgery. I do, um, I do surgery of the head and neck. Um, I was the quality improvement director in the University of Saskatchewan Patient Safety. Oh, yeah. I also you know what? The, it's, they're saying the connection is no good. Okay. Might you want? Uh, no, I think it might be. Would you mind coming outside? It's too noisy. Right? I think it might be. Let me see. Um, Look, guys, guys, I'm going to come into I'm going to, the signal. It says, yeah, I'm not. Okay, no, that's the signal is bad. Video bad. It might be better outside here. Hold on a second, people. I think I think it's just being in the brick building. Guys, hold up. I'm going to do this. Do you, you want to grab it? Grab it. Grab it. Yeah. Come on, do this. Come on, this. This. Give us a second here, please. I think the internet connection was here. We actually did a live special feed. Josh, were you using the 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 white one? No, I think not. Okay, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna come to the window. Maybe if we go to the window. How's it going? How are you? Very good. Good. Gonna see if we can get the phone back. Interwebs. Josh, you guys, you guys oh, you know what ahead. the problem might be? <laughs> I don't want to be honest. Yeah. It might be, I'm going to turn off the Wi-Fi because it might be trying to pick up. People, let me know if it's better. I turned off the Wi-Fi because it might have been trying to pick up the Wi-Fi. Audio is good. CNN resigns. That's a, I got a Timcast notification. Go outside. O'Toole is forced out as conservative leader. Interesting. Better. Okay. So, Doctor. Hold this for a second. I'm going to take my jacket off. There you go. And then okay. you're speaking directly to 8,500 people now. Am I, am I alive? You are alive. Okay. Who are you? Tell, tell uh, the world. Well, uh, my name is Francis Christian. Uh, I'm a surgeon uh, and I'm a poet. Uh, my book of poems was released to the world uh, in uh, April of 2021. It's called To a Nurse Friend Weeping. Uh, as a surgeon, I'm a trauma surgeon. Uh, I do a trauma call. I also do oncological surgery, that is cancer surgery, surgery of the um, um, uh, of the head and neck, uh, thyroid surgery, that sort of thing. I'm also involved uh, in um, the quality improvement uh, project. I was the quality improvement director in the University of Saskatchewan, quality improvement and patient safety. I was also director of the Surgical Humanities Department, which sought to uh, to reconnect, re-engage, and engage physicians, surgeons, medical students with the with poetry, music, drama, um, and so that, that is. Back in March of 2020, I might have Audio. <laughs> 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 
Guys, we're doing it. How do I do this? Sorry about that. It's uh, okay now. People, let's let's wait for the audio to catch up with the video. Is that better? Is it? We're going to give it a few seconds before we see if it gets better. Garbled. Give it a few more seconds, people. Thirty seconds. We're outside now, so it should be better. Connect. These are okay. It's better. Here we go. Sorry, guys. Uh, the question I asked Dr. Christian was when did he first start speaking out about COVID, and then the follow-up is going to be. What was the reaction and how does he feel about what is going on in the state of public discourse as relates to science and medicine? So I'm going to give the mic back over. Here you go, sir. There you go. Oh, you're talking to this part here. This part here? Yeah. Okay. So, David, that's a very good question uh, because we're living in dystopian Orwellian times. Uh, we are living under the boot of a totalitarian uh, tyranny. And how did we get here? Uh, this, this is, in fact, a medical tyranny. Uh, and because it's a medical tyranny, it must have something of a medical origin. Back in uh, 2020, March, when this whole COVID thing unfolded, um, I actually supported uh, the authorities. I thought this was a new virus. Let's give it a little bit of rope. Um, you know, let, let the government do its lockdowns. I even supported some of the lockdowns. I didn't support the way it was being enforced, but I thought, let's see what happens. Um, and then by the end of April, what actually happened is people were being censored. And the censorship was not of just anybody. I had heard of some of the great physicians who were being censored even before COVID. I'll give you an example. Uh, as a surgeon, I often go into the ICU. I work in the ICU. And there's a, there's a name that every ICU physician should have heard of, and that is Paul Marek. Paul Marek is uh, the second most published ICU physician ever, and the most published ICU physician now practicing. And Paul's work in sepsis should be known to every physician who has anything to do with the ICU. I knew about his work in, on sepsis before COVID, and this guy was being censored. He was, he was, his, what he was saying about COVID was called misinformation and disinformation. Then there's another guy called Pierre Corey. Pierre Corey's book on point of care ultrasound is actually, we're in Ottawa now, but if you go to the Ottawa ICUs, you'll find his book on point of, point of care ultrasound. Uh, it's also done, it's also actually uh, read by ER guys, and in other, in other words, it, it teaches surgeons how to interpret ultrasound. So these guys were being censored, and I was a student of Soviet history from, from my teenage years. I had uh, read a book by Richard Wombrand, uh, Tortured for Christ, and I thought I should become aware of the methods of the Soviet tyranny. And then I, then I realized that the same terminology was being used on television and propaganda channels. Disinformation, misinformation. These are, the, these are the same things out of the Soviet and before that the Nazi playbook. Now, what I also realized from my knowledge of Soviet history and also to, to uh, some extent Nazi history is that they had to go after the academy because they had to go after the ideas. They had to take over the ideas. And they had to replace the ideas of science, of the pursuit of truth, with their own ideas, the narrative, the narrative of tyranny. And that's what actually was happening. Uh, they, 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 the, the media became an arm of government. In Canada here, Her Majesty's loyal opposition was sleeping at the wheel. It became one party rule. There are two types of tyrannies. One is a communist tyranny, which every, when, you, when you talk about tyranny and totalitarian rule, you talk about communism, you talk about uh, the Soviet Union. But there's another type of tyranny. It's called, it's called a capitalistic tyranny. And the capitalistic tyranny is just as terrifying as a communist tyranny. Uh, m most people don't know that IBM ran the death camps computers. The computers are the death camps of the Nazi regime was run by IBM. Uh, GM, through their subsidiary Opel, uh, 
actually gave the technology for the German tanks. Uh, Henry Ford received the German eagle from Hitler himself. So the capitalistic tyranny is as real as a communist tyranny. Mussolini defined fascism, not my definition, Mussolini's definition. Fascism was defined by Mussolini as a fusion, as a fusion of corporate power and government power. That's exactly what we have in Canada today. We have one party rule. We have fusion of corporate power and government power. Big farmers controlling the government. Big farmers controlling Trudeau. He's just a puppet to these big farmer guys. So this is this is something I had actually uh, already seen. And then because I s started looking at the data myself very closely, nothing, absolutely nothing fitted the narrative. So I started looking, do I have some more time? Oh yeah, please go okay. for it. <laughs> as, as, as much time as you need. All right. Um, can, we just, can you say your name? For the uh, David Fry, hey? Viva Fry on YouTube. So I had looked at the data. I looked at the data very closely and none of the official narratives made any sense at all. And at that time, I started uh, speaking with my colleagues, uh, for example, anesthesia colleagues who also do ICU shifts. So they would come to my opting room to give anesthesia and I would engage them in conversation about the data and how the data didn't fit the narrative. Um, so, and the lockdowns and none of this made any sense. By the way, the term lockdown, uh, the public must understand, it's not a medical term. It's the first time in the history of medicine it's been used in a public health fashion. Lockdown is actually a prison term. It's from the prison system. You lock down prisons. You don't lock down people in cities. You don't lock down children. But anyway, that's just one example of the narrative. And here's the thing. I, as I would explain the data to my colleagues in the ICU, in, the, uh, in giving anesthesia for my patients, for example, uh, or my residents, uh, a sort of glaze would come over them. They would switch off. And I couldn't get through that, that glaze. Uh, that, that, that wall of disinformation, that brainwashed um, psyche. I, I'm not sure what, it, what exactly it was. And, 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 and I tried that for several months. And then last spring, this government announced that they were approving the, 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 the vaccine, the injection, the mRNA injection to our kids, less than 17 year olds. Not only that, the government was telling us that they could give uh, the kids could give permission, could give permission for this injection without parental consent for a type of injection, the mRNA technology that had never been used clinically in humans before. Uh, at that time, there was already a signal from the uh, VAERS data or the vaccine adverse event reporting system. The signal was very strong that this is not a safe vaccine. And, 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 and in my province of Saskatchewan, I... I, 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 I looked at this whole scenario with kids unfolding and I, and, and, I, and I said to myself, if I don't speak up now, if I don't speak out, I would never live with my conscience again. Let me ask you one question. And, you know, people are making jokes in the chat that YouTube's going to censor. I don't think so. Uh, but whatever. Uh, when, when this is an article in the CTV that I clipped and I, I put it on Twitter where CTV had originally reported uh, that adverse effects, serious side effects, were in the order of one in a million for the vaccine. And then they had to correct it. And it's a correction in a CTV article that said, no, we, we misspoke. We, it was a mistake. It's not one in a million based on public health data from Canada, the public health. It's one in 10,000. So what doctor is saying, other than being a, a freaking doctor, people, uh, it's now been confirmed by mainstream media. So these are no longer... Uh, d even disputed facts. Uh, but one question is this, you're a doctor, you're a surgeon, you're going to, ref and I presume you've gotten this a lot. You're not an epidemiologist, you're not a pathologist, whatever. So you should not be speaking on COVID because stick to your lane, Dr. Surgeon, this is in your lane. Uh, yes, uh, I'm not an epidemiologist and I'm not a public health uh, physician, but I can look at numbers. I can look at data. I can look at statistics. I can analyze statistics. I can actually make out very well what the statistics is saying. That's part of my training, okay? 
So uh, uh, just think about this. How many times have public health officials been wrong, been absolutely wrong in the last, let's say just the last year? Mass, according to them, were good or bad, and then good again, and then bad again, and then one layer of mask, and then two layers, and then three layers. And then Fauci said initially that you didn't need mass, and then you did need mass, and then you need a, uh, I think his latest is that you need an N95 mask. So, uh, and then look at, look at their advice about uh, social distancing all over the place. So public health is not a magic word. It, all of us look at numbers. All of us look at data. All of us look at the evidence. We all have the ability to follow the evidence to the truth. Uh, also, I was the director of quality improvement and patient safety. Uh, I also introduced to my university the National Surgical Quality Improvement Program uh, from Chicago, the American College of Surgeons. So that is a very numbers-based thing. We actually analyze data all the time. So it is, it is, a, it is part of the misinformation from the, the, the COVID tyranny that, that, that basically tries to say that only if you're a public health uh, person, you should have any kind of opinion. Uh, that's also part of the tyranny. It's part of uh, what uh, we call listen-coism. Can I tell the, your, your- Oh, please, please, please. Okay. Li listen-coism, but yeah, it's, go for it, please. So, Lysenko was a, uh, a communist, a Soviet-era uh, 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 geneticist, and uh, he was asked to come up with a new theory of genetics. Uh, so, this was because the communists thought that the bourgeois ideas of the West uh, had to be replaced by a new theory of genetics. And so he came up with an idea of genetics, which is actually a disaster for the Soviet Union. Um, but anybody who disagreed with Lysenko was persecuted. He actually put his own mentor and teacher into prison, a guy called Vavilov, who was actually a brilliant geneticist. And you can look it up in Wikipedia. It's called listen coism, L-Y-S-E-N-K-O-I-S-M. So listen coism is when you follow or you're asked to follow only the official narrative. And the official narrative is, is, uh, is all that academics are permitted to adopt and follow. If you stray from the official narrative, you can be put into prison. In the Soviet system, you could be a shot, you could, be go, you, should go, you could go to the gulag, uh, and it usually started with terms like disinformation. Uh, Pravda, the newspaper, would say, this person has been noticed for disinformation. And, and that sort of thing is happening now. So it's, it's a fallacy that only a certain uh, you know, uh, group of doctors can interpret data. We can all interpret data. Uh, can I go on with oh, my yeah. own story? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay. So um, when I had... When, when I knew that, that informed consent was not being given to our kids in Saskatchewan and to their parents particularly, I, I called for a news conference. Uh, the news conference was meant to uh, call out the government of Saskatchewan for the lack of informed consent in the injection of our kids with, um, with this. Well, there's some glorious sounds going on oh, in the, the background. The, the, the mic is good. It's going to pick is up. Is it? Yeah. yeah. So, here's the thing, at the news conference which called for informed consent, at the news conference that called for informed consent, the CTV guys were there, Global News is there because me and another physician are there and only, this is just a physician's thing. Now, at that conference, a news conference, I called for informed consent. I, 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 and in, including, included in informed consent was the new technology the mRNA technology that had never been used in human beings before, included in informed consent was the WHERE's data, the vaccine adverse event reporting data that was showing a strong signal of harm. The fact that kids have a 10 times more risk of dying of a car accident than of COVID. In other words, uh, kids are really, really, really safe. And in fact, the recent data a few months ago from Germany, a country of 80 million people showed that not even one kid had died of COVID. So uh, after that news conference, um, CTV, the local uh, Saskatchewan 
Saskatoon uh, Global News had me on their evening news. They had um, um, the the post media newspapers. By the way, I got to uh, tell your your viewers, uh, David, that media becoming an arm of government is actually a sign of the tyranny. That 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 has happened in all tyrannies before. Uh, me, uh, journalism, as journalism once existed, does not exist anymore. There is no such thing as a balanced view. There's no such thing as following a story and investigating and following the truth. Journalists should be ashamed of themselves. And what about the journalist's conscience? Do you have a conscience? Will you please speak out the truth? But here's the thing. The Post Media newspapers, the, the, which includes National Post, Regina Leader Post, the Saskatoon Star Phoenix, carried my story, front page hit pieces. And in a week's time, I was fired from my contract. My, my professorship was suspended. For, for what? For asking for informed consent in the injection of our kids with an untested vaccine, which had never been used in kids before. Uh, now, there's a re there are reams of data now. Pfizer's own data admits that it's actually the, the myocarditis risk is more with the vaccine than with... Oh, yes, but they, but they refer to it as mild cases, sometimes requiring hospitalization as a doctor. Is there any such concept as mild myocarditis? Uh, David, that's an abomination to call it mild myocarditis. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's actually, I would say, uh, for those promoting that kind of thing, it is it is one of those things that will fall under crimes against humanity. It's only mild until it happens to your own child. There is no such thing as mild myocarditis. A large Finnish study uh, showed that 30% of kids with myocarditis, 30% of people with myocarditis will be dead at five years. Uh, I believe it's six years. So it was a six year follow-up study and it had a 30% mortality at six years. So there is no such thing as mild myocarditis. Pfizer's own data shows the risk of myocarditis is more. Uh, the, 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 in their own data, six month data, they show that they will send a number of kids to the ICU through their mRNA injection with myocarditis. Uh, but here's the thing, uh, David, uh, after, we, uh, after I got fired, uh, Fired. Just, if I may ask, how many years had you been on contract before you got fired? So uh, my contract had been active for about, well, it's renewed every yeah. three years. And this was the third year of my contract. And, and interestingly, uh, my performance reviews were top of the grade. My, my chief of surgery actually wrote uh, in my 2020 uh, contract report, that if I could give Dr. Christian a bonus, I would. So here's, here's me asking for something that shouldn't be controversial at all, informed consent. And, and, and how, did, how did the authorities think that firing me from director of surgical humanities actually would help the pandemic? Uh, but here's the thing. There was a recording of the tribunal that fired me. And that tribunal uh, was composed of Saskatchewan Health Authority and uh, uh, and the dean of the of the medical school. What the what the authorities didn't actually reckon on on didn't uh, actually count on is for that recording to to actually be in the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedom press release, and then that recording went around the world. Uh, it was heard in 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 in, in vast parts of. Uh, planet Earth, and I, I started getting letters and calls of support from Canada, from the US, from Denmark, from Australia, from New Zealand, from Germany, from Holland, and, and, and that's how my story became known. But it's really not my story. It's... Uh, question. One question. Well, go for it. Okay, bre breaking news story, Aaron O'Toole appears to be out. Do you have any words for O'Toole as he's booted out? Yes, good. Because O'Toole was a tool, a tool of the tyranny. And, um, and, 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 and fast, you remember I told you fascist government is one party rule. 
and we were actually having one party rule. Her Majesty's loyal opposition was missing at the wheel. And, and, and truckers, this is your first victory. You have fractured the Conservative Party and you have booted out O2. That's what, that's what your political insight told us. Yes. Say that again. Just say that again. So truckers... Yes, this, this, this is the truckers' first big victory. They have fractured the Conservative Party, like you said, Josh. Yes. And they have ousted the Conservative leader. Bravo. Breaking news. And uh, let me just say one thing, by the way, guys. Everyone watching this, you can clip this. Clip the entire thing. Clip the entire segment, highlights, whatever. Post it around. Just in case, we're still on YouTube now, but, uh, and I don't think that the doctor has said anything shocking, controversial, or that in any realm of reality could warrant censorship. And some might even say if YouTube decides to censor a doctor that they are acting as unlicensed medical professionals. Uh, now, you're fired, you get fired. JCCF is on your case now. You're with yes. J J Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms. John Carpe has been on the show at least twice. Uh, let's hear some more, sir. Uh, so, the, the, the fact that uh, the recording of my firing went around the world uh, meant that a lot of people uh, started asking me, were you shocked? Were you shocked with how they fired you? And I, I must admit, I was not shocked. I was disturbed, but not shocked. I'll tell you why I wasn't, wasn't shocked, David. Um, if you look at the transcripts of the firing of academics, from the Soviet Union. Some of them are still on the internet. The, 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 the words they used in my firing were almost the same. Things like, Dr. Christian, you're an intelligent man, but you're using your intelligence in the wrong way. You're associating with the wrong people. So, you know, where had I heard this? Where, where actually had I heard this script before? It was in the tyrannies of communist uh, Soviet Union and the Nazi tyranny. So uh, here, here's, here's what I want to want to tell the licensing bodies, the censoring bodies, the censoring press. Misinformation does not mean I don't agree with you and therefore it is misinformation. If you don't agree with me, debate me, discuss me, discuss the evidence with me and you know, I did a presentation with uh, some leading academics, with Peter McCullough, with so many other uh, leading um, uh, physicians. Uh, and and, and here, here is what we said. If the other side, the side that disagrees with us, wants to debate us, wants to discuss us, we are open to a public debate. And I want to repeat that, 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 that offer. We will debate, discuss the evidence publicly uh, with anybody on the opposite side, okay? And that is how science progresses, by discuss, discussion, disagreement, debate. That's how science progresses. You don't agree with me, and therefore this is misinformation, is not misinformation, okay? And then here's, here's the other thing. There's a, there's a word called expert that has been bandied about by the mainstream media. Who is an expert? Fauci? No, he's not an expert. Uh, you know, uh, David, I, I haven't read the full book, The Real Anthony Fauci by Robert F. Kennedy. I read only the first 50 pages. I almost fell off my chair. Uh, and, and doctor, I, I'm, listen, I'm now uh, 10 hours into the book, I think, maybe, maybe more. Yeah, 13 hours into the book. Um, Fauci, there was some ins there was some issues with Fauci to say the oh that was it. The, some people on the internet were saying Fauci hasn't sued for defamation yet. What's up with that? And ordinarily, I mean, I'm a lawyer. I don't put much weight into those arguments because you know Cardi B, if she decided not to sue for being said she had herpes, I wouldn't have taken that to mean she did have herpes. I would just say you don't sue for defamation for random nonsensical stuff. The stuff in RFK's book about Dr. Anthony Fauci, if it's false. I would say is extremely defamatory because I'm listening to it and now I am thinking that Dr. Fauci might have been a foul of the law, if not outright ethics, easily. Uh, and the fact that he hasn't sued, sent a cease and desist, whatever, I do have questions about that. But uh, keep listening to the book if you want to get an ulcer on top of the headache. Uh, no, <laughs> keep, keep going. So but if I may ask, are you now formally out of, out of practice as a, as a doctor, as a surgeon? Uh, 
when they uh, suspended my, I was a, a clinical professor of surgery and they, and they suspended that, that's under appeal. The JCCF, uh, and that you can find the JC, my, uh, the report of the JCCF is jccf.ca, or you can just Google JCCF Dr. Christian and you'll get me. Um, now, here's, a, here's the interesting thing, David. By suspending my professorship, they also said that, that it is unsafe for, uh, for residents and medical students to interact with me. So that made it impossible for me to work in an academic setting. However, because of the fact that by the grace of God, my performance reviews were so good and my practice of surgery, nothing, no problem with that at all. My, I have a full surgery license. Um, I, I, and I got to ask the discreet question. Have they put you uh, in financial harm by having done what they did? And how can people support you if they want to? Uh, David, that's a, that's a very kind uh, question, a very good question. Um, yes, there is uh, there is financial harm. Uh, I did lose my contract, but the but the but 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 the story now is actually much bigger than me. Uh, when I hear the honking horns, I actually, I I, I also I'm reminded of Les Miserables. Do you hear the song of sweet la da dee da 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 da? Do you know the words, David? No, but I, I'm going to say it's it's better that it's good that you're a doctor and not a singer, sir. <laughs> Sorry. I, I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist. All right. Yeah. No, I don't. I have, I've never seen Les Miserables, people. Okay. So Les Miserables has uh, has that thing where the the crowds are are storming the 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 the, the castle of tyranny, so to speak, and they they sing this rousing song as. Do you hear the music sing? Or, uh, you know, you, you should you should really play that song and and play it by the side of the glorious horns, the glorious sounds of the trucks, and and, and, and it's it's a glorious moment for the nation. It's a miraculous time. The 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 the, the heart of the tyranny has been breached. Uh, this actually went places I didn't think it was going to go, Doctor. I mean, I can't really thank you enough, actually, for calling me because I had lost total track of time. Uh, what are you doing now going forward? I, you know, sorry, back it up. I got one question. How do you feel in your heart of hearts when your license, when, you, when your profession is being attacked, not by boycotts, Twitterverse, but by the actual board of your profession, like by the actual members, people in your field? It, I mean, how do you deal with that type of betrayal uh, of your profession from professionals? Uh, that's a that's an excellent question because uh, yes, this tyranny has morphed into something that affects every one of our lives and every part of every life. Small businesses have gone under. Uh, children uh, who don't need masks in schools have 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 lost a couple of years of their lives. Teenagers have been told to socially distance. Can you imagine that, David? They can't talk to each other. They can't hug each other. They can't do the normal things that teenagers do, and and so uh, this, this has affected every bit of society, but this is a medical tyranny too, because the whole thing is built around a medical lie. The medical lie that, the, that this virus actually affects all age groups equally, it doesn't. It, uh, it, it, there's, there's like a thousand fold difference by, from mortality from COVID for kids than for the elderly. So focus prote protection of the elderly was what is called for. Now, if we stray from the official narrative, um, in other words, if we pursue the truth, the licensing bodies, you're absolutely right, they've come down heavily on those, those doctors. Uh, in, in, in Ontario, for example, uh, the, the licensing body seems to have wear some badge of honor in saying that there are X number of doctors that they're investigating for what? for having a different opinion on the sides. I want to rem remind the licensing bodies that that is how science progresses, by differing opinions, by discussion, dissent, debate. And, and, and just look at the last several months. Many of the people who, who had contrary views and who you have persecuted actually have been born out to be right. The vaccine is a leaky vaccine. 
It is not safe. It is not effective. Uh, the, 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 the crime minister, I won't call him prime minister, the crime minister has shown that the vaccine is ineffective. In other words, he's triple jabbed, he's triple jabbed, and he's got COVID, and he's telling people that this is the solution for the pandemic. Well, here, I don't want to, I'm not playing devil's advocate. I'm just going to give the steel man argument. They're going to say it is effective because it reduces the severity of symptoms. That is the, that's what the argument is now morphed into. And I guess, I mean, I don't know, I don't know how you measure that, but that will be the response. And then what's going to be the retort to that? It reduces the severity of symptoms. Operate on that. I mean, take that for granted or deny it. But what do you, what's the response? Well, first of all, that is not the goal of any vaccine. A vaccine is supposed to prevent illness. It wasn't the goal of the Pfizer trials also. It is something that they picked up as an excuse to say, yes, the vaccine does prevent severe illness. I want to see the raw data before I... I'll give you an example. Before I can agree with that conclusion, uh, we need to see the raw data. I'll give you an example. In Alberta, they released this, and I, that was in my presentation with Peter McCullough. Um, in Alberta, they released the statistic that, um, that, that in fact, the vaccine-related uh, problems with COVID was much, uh, much more after the first two weeks after the, I'm just saying it slowly so that, it, you know, uh, the, 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 the science is, 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 is obvious. The, the vaccine related effects after the first two, two weeks after the first dose was, was, was speaking. So in other words, uh, we know from the basic science that if you get the first dose of the mRNA vaccine, you're more likely to get COVID. You're more likely to get COVID. But that kind of person in provincial data would be called unvaccinated. So if you look at the graphs in the Alberta data, which I presented, you will see that COVID cases peak in the first two weeks after the first dose of the vaccine. You will then see that severe cases also peak after the first two weeks of the vaccine. And then you will see that deaths also peak in the first two weeks after the vaccine. So these should be directly attributed to the vaccine and not to COVID itself. So I need to look at the raw data and they're not releasing that raw data. We need to look at the raw data. We need to bring in independent investigators, independent investigators. And I bet you that this whole data thing will change. So, but this was not the goal of the vaccine. The goal of the vaccine was to prevent infection and to prevent transmission. The goal of any vaccine take any vaccine. It is to prevent infection and to prevent transmission. It doesn't prevent infection. It doesn't prevent transmission, David. Amazing. All right. Um, I mean, that's a good answer, people. That's That would be the answer to the discussion that should be had publicly. Doctor, uh, before we end this, where can people find you? Where can they, uh, how can they reach you? And I mean, what are you doing now going forward? Um, if you go to Rumble and, uh, and, and put in the search term, Muse in Arms. How do you spell it? Uh, M U S E I N A R M S. Muse in Arms, one word. You will come across a channel that has my videos. Uh, I gave a message on the Trishwood show uh, live to the truckers, and you'll find that, um, that 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 message is has now been seen by tens of hundreds of thousands of people. Uh, and and but there's also that you'll also find videos of my presentations uh, with Peter McCullough, David Redman, and Roger Hodkinson. Um, I'm uh, I, I think I mentioned that I'm a poet. Uh, if you Google uh, Francis Christian dash to a nurse friend weeping, Francis Christian dash to a nurse friend weeping. That is the title of my book of poems. And you can, you, you, you can buy my book of poems from Harp Press. Harp Press from Nova Scotia is my publisher. All right, excellent. Dr. Christian, uh, I can tell from the chat, people love you and we might, I've been, I've seen some asking for a longer interview still. So thank you very much. Thank you.
Thanks. Nice, very nice to meet you. And, and I'm sorry I was late. And thank you for, oh, no, for calling. Oh no, it's me. a pleasure. And th thanks for traveling all the way from Montreal well, to, to I, do I, this. I would, I would, I would. If I didn't have three kids and two dogs at home, I, I think I would have camped out here all week. But <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you very much. All right, people. I'm going to go back and get my bag and then hit the street again. Dr. Christian, thank you tremendously. Um, you know what? Uh, I'll, I'm going to be. Out, I'm going to just get my backpack. Okay, people. We're going to lose connection briefly. How's it going? Uh, we're going to lose connection while I get my stuff. Just uh, give me. Cr Chris Pavlovsky just said that there are 5,000 people watching on Rumble, which is phenomenal. This goes in my pocket. I'm going to zip up my jacket.